hello, 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 hello. Wherever you are on our glorious planet Earth, I hope you are having a fantastic day, evening, or night, wherever you are. Right now, I'm in the ESPN 10 part series about the Chicago Bulls, The Last Dance. So if you hear anything in the background, I'm recording this live. I'm not in my little closet. I'm not in my, my, my little private YouTube booth. Because me, when I make a YouTube uh, video, I like talking live. I like, I, like to, I like to talk live. I like to let the uh, information pour right on me, for me, on the spot. I don't, I'm not thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say what I got to say. I heard several weeks ago, before the uh, Last Dance 10 part episode was televised, that Michael Jordan, he was sort of worried and afraid that the normal public, or not the normal, but the public in general, would see him as a big, gigantic a-hole. But, in my mind, while I'm watching this, I like the way Michael Jordan is presenting himself. It don't seem like he's reading the script. It don't seem like he's taking a lot of time to think about what he's saying. It seems like to me, he's speaking from the heart. He's talking about when he was in North Carolina, like he was speaking right from the heart. He speaks so much from the heart that ESP, ESPN has allowed him to use profanity. Not grievous profanity, but profanity nonetheless. We see. He's revealing what it was like at North Carolina. He seemed completely human. What's there not to like about him? He was talking about his early years with the Chicago Bulls. He talked about his ups and downs, his trials and tribulations, what he liked and he did not like in his first couple of years of the organization. Who would be upset of him for revealing what's on his heart? It revealed that during his year at the Chicago Bulls, the type of teammate he was. He was driven. And since he was driven, he wanted the other players to be driven. Isn't that how life is in any organization? The president, the vice president, the manager, work hard. So they want the people who are, quote, beneath them to work hard. So in my mind, Michael Jordan, he's not like, what's there to hate about him for me? I don't hate him. I enjoy the way he's talking. When he was talking about uh, how many media people was touting that, that the Cleveland Cavaliers will crush the Chicago Bulls when Chicago beat them in a number of I think he beat him three times, or whatever, in the series. Michael Jordan got up and went to the media people face and said, this is for you, you, and you. What's there to be upset about that when he's coming back laughing and giggling and addressing the people who were saying, you are going to lose? He is not acting like no big-time a-hole. He's like a person... Who does, like I said, just speaking from his heart. Later on, it revealed his struggles to overcome the famed Detroit Pistons. Year after year, the Bulls would lose. But the first time they played the Detroit Pistons, I think they were swept. If I'm wrong... Leave a comment in the comment section. Also, if you enjoy this little uh, my Aaron of Michael Jordan portrayal 
on this episode so far because it's four of them. Last week was two. This one was two. So he can't go. Down, he can't go down here. Please give me a thumbs up. Like I said, if you have any comments, leave a comment. If you would like to subscribe to the channel, be my guest and subscribe. Now on with my tail. The Detroit Pistons in the beginning they swept the Bulls. They defeated the Bulls easily. But as the years progressed, they started, they got stronger and stronger and defeated the Pistons. But of course, when they when they played, I think Detroit in the first two, Doug Collin was their coach. And from uh, the last dance, episodes three and four, when Doug Collin was the coach, Michael Jordan admit that he was the focal point of Chicago's offense. The ball would be in his hand the majority of the time. So, it was, it was revealed that Doug Collins was against the famed triangle offense, which helped to put the balls on its historic NBA Path. So, since Doug Collins for the uh, several years hated the triangle offense, Jerry Krauss said it's time to go. It's time to give Phil Jackson his reign. Because if you saw it, and I knew this too, if you know anything about the Bulls, Phil Jackson was an assistant coach to Doug Collins. But after this, because they switched the triangle on offense, that probably gave the Detroit more of a Goliath to face because the ball wasn't in Jordan hands all the time. Under Phil Jackson tutelage, teams now had to pay attention to everyone on the field, not just Jordan. So... It was revealed that Jordan did not want Phil Jackson to be the, co the coach at the time because he was so used to having the ball in his hands. Again, he was not acting like an a-hole. He was just being a normal human, saying, I like the way Coach Doug Collins do his thing. But, but I do see the downfall in Doug Collins' method because... Of Doug Collins' method of giving Jordan a, the ball the majority of the time, he was not allowing Jordan to trust his teammates. So I will get to the Phil Jackson, the triangle offense. It forced Jordan to trust his teammates more. And that's why he had so many championships because he learned how to trust them. But when Michael Jordan was giving his assessments, what, why should he be worried like he was several weeks ago about giving his heartfelt opinion. Maybe it was because on so many of his past interviews, it was always canned, fixed, regimented. Here with the ESPN thing, so this is going 10 episodes deep, we get to peep into his mind a little bit more. And I enjoy it because we get to really see, he's just a, he, I know he's human anyway, but you get my point. When somebody... No longer in the public eye, or they living behind a closed, guarded estate. They seem a little bit different than a normal person. But he still is a person, and that's what he act like. A normal, regular person. It even went into how he felt annoyed that the Detroit Pistons did not Shake their hands when they left the floor. Isaiah Thomas gave an excuse about that was the way things was. That was how uh, Boston treated them, walking off the floor. But Jordan again, in his mind, he thought he was being an a-hole, but he wasn't. He just was giving it. He just was being uh, frank and upfront because we did see, even on them television clips, when... The Pistons kicked Chicago butt. Jordan didn't walk off. Jordan nor the Bulls walked off the court frowning 
and upset that the Pistons won. They accepted that they lost. Because that's one thing about Michael Jordan. Since he put everything on the floor, he did the best he can. He never get upset from what I've seen. He never really gets upset when he loses because he know that he gave it his best. But that's, that's my little take on Michael Jordan so far. Like I said in the beginning, from what I saw from a lot of YouTube videos, he was upset and worried that people would see him differently. But in my mind, as I stated earlier, he did a wonderful job. I like how upfront and frank he was. So, therefore, if you like my observation or my discussion about the last dance, in this case, Michael Jordan didn't embarrass himself, give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments about what you like, or did not like about episodes 3 and 4, I'll be happy for your comments. If you would like to subscribe, then furthermore hear me talk about whatever I find interesting in these sports. In this case, I'm interested in the last dance of the Chicago Bulls. Subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, dear listener, peace.